we make bad investments because we have bad information. And that's typically what would happen in the stock market or in a, a real estate deal. You make a bad investment because you don't know how to how to read the numbers. You don't know how to read the market. You don't know how to read the information that's out there. So you end up making a bad decision. But from, I guess from a relationship perspective is that the information is one, knowing yourself, knowing what you need so that you can pick better, so that you can invest in a, in a, in a, a good partner. You know, the, I, I, w I would imagine that the, what is the word? The, the skill set is the same. What you need is the same. You need good information. You need some r good resources. You need some level of intelligence to make a good decision. And I think we start with, with, with bad information. Like what you need, if you, if you know you're an emotional person or if you know you need reassurance all the time, why would you be with someone who, who lacks that? That's just not their personality. Why would you want to force that on somebody? But why what if that's hard to find? That from some... Hey, okay, cool. If it's hard to find, either you're going to be with somebody who treats you unlike what you need, and you're going to be miserable and sad or whatever, and it's not going to end up good for you, or you figure out the person you need, like the person who's, who's literally willing to offer you what, what you need to be successful in a relationship. That's like marrying a broke dude, but you feel like you as a person, you need to eat out every day. I think too many people grow up poor and then search for somebody with money. I think too many people grow up hard and search for somebody to make it easier. I think that too many people grow up with, without affection from their parent, so they search for the most affectionate person, but that affectionate person can't provide security. I think that the traumas that everybody goes through in their life, they look for somebody to fill that void rather than looking for who's the actual best fit for them in terms of a partnership and a marriage, um, in my opinion. So they are bad, yes, they are bad investors with their love, time, um, energy, effort, and youth. So is it because they're not being honest with themselves or they're just like failing to unpack? Both. Okay. Both, I mean, everybody's different. Some people, it took me 21 years of my own life to understand where a lot of my anger came from. Even though I knew it, I didn't know the depths of it. So I can never tackle it, I can never master it, I can never conquer it. And I think that that's rare. I think a lot of people live their whole life because yeah. they go through they something. It, yeah. You know, I, I was talking to a 50 year old man one time and, and this was a long time ago and I remember saying to myself, hmm, people think that age makes, the older you get means you'll get it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people die and they never get it. Mm -hmm. um, at old the ages. wisdom, they don't get the, they get the age, yeah. but they don't get the wisdom they that comes get... with experiences and age and stuff yeah. like that. And some of them are fortunate enough to get lucky and, and, and marry somebody who can help dig them out of whatever it is that they, you know, are buried within themselves. But that's a that's a risky business. And I would never want to put my hands in. Um, okay, if you could say five things that you would attribute to a successful relationship, I don't know if it should be personal or not. Yeah, I guess it has to be personal. Five things. What would they be? That I basically bring to the table. No, no, no. Uh, just like if. Or that I see as. If like five ingredients. Key things, yeah, five ingredients for if we're making a cake, mm -hmm. you know, successful relationship cake. What are the five ingredients you think you need? Transparency of who you were. It's number one ingredient to having a successful relationship. Like who you were before? Before okay. this relationship, who were you? Tell me who you were. Um, because that allows me to that allows me to assess your ways of thinking and your cognitive skills, and also your tendencies and your capacities. I, if you were somebody who were in the streets, tell me you was in the streets. If you were somebody who was, you know, a thought, and you had a long whole face, tell me you were a thought, and you had a long whole face. If you were somebody who was, um, and this is a hard thing, but if you were somebody who was sexually assaulted or abused, you need to tell me you were sexually assaulted and abused because I need to know how to deal with you and how to treat you and, and you know, you know what I'm saying? No, that's a good point. Um, 
that's one ingredient. The second ingredient is weigh people's accolades before they got to you. What do you mean? So like the other person? Yeah, like yeah, yep. Okay. So when you're choosing a person in this in, in this part of the successful relationship, you need to weigh the other person's accolades. Um, granted, this is talking from somebody who's from their mid twenties up. Because if you're 18, 19, 20, 21, you, you haven't know, done anything, <laughs> right? But um, you got your diploma. Who me? No, I'm just, I'm oh. just saying. Like if you 18, you. I didn't even have a diploma. <laughs> so like, like, I got my school. Uh, you know, yeah, I got barely. Now nah, I'm messing around. <laughs> Um, weigh your accolades because that'll allow somebody to understand how efficient you are at at reaching potential and goals, reaching your potential and goals. Um, if you're 28 or 29 years old and you're like, yeah, I started two businesses, one flopped, one is doing well, at least I know you're consistent and I, at least I know you know how to learn to some extent, just with general knowledge. Um, so that's two that I gave you. Mm -hmm. The third thing I'm going to say is come healed. Be, it's tough. It's tough, but it's nobody's job to heal you. So you, can I have a quick? Can I catch you? Would you say come healed or come willing to like work out whatever your issues are? Because you know a lot of times people gotcha, don't yeah. get to healing, you know, until much later. If you want a successful relationship, come healed. Okay. If you want a potential successful relationship, go in your strides of healing. Because here's the thing. When you're going into a relationship, you don't know necessarily what that person is going to do right. that could trigger whatever your, you know, traumas or, or is, issues are. So, but if you come healed, whatever they do cannot move you off your plane and you can continue to move forward with this person because they don't know you like you know you. Would you, would you say that the average person is, is healed or, or even willing just to be open and to unpack themselves with somebody else? I think the average person is scarred and they're battered. They're not healed. It's very hard to heal yourself. Right? Like nobody understands how hard it is to heal themselves because they refuse to, to, to actually take on a challenge of healing themselves. Or to address or what to address, their yeah. traumas are. That's probably the hardest part. If you are asking a man to provide you a Lambo, you better be able to provide you or him, I mean, yourself or him a Lambo as well. Because mm -hmm. um, if you run across a person like Rico, I love talking to third person. <laughs> if you run across a person like Rico, I'm gonna look at you and be like, what? I would never get you a Lambo if you couldn't get yourself a Lambo. But let's put, let's put that in, in average person terms. Don't ask for somebody to buy you flowers every, this is going back to the fourth one. Mm -hmm. Don't ask for a man to buy you flowers every single week and you think you're going to hold down on having sex with him. Are, is that the same? That's what I'm saying. Because flowers is like fulfilling you and this. Okay, okay, okay. Fulfilling you, like, you know, your fantasies or your, your intimacy levels. And most men are, you know, fulfilled intimacy through sex. That was maybe a poor analogy, but there we go. That was like breaking it down. And the last thing I'm gonna say, the fifth thing for to, to sustain a successful and obtain a successful relationship, and I saved the best for last, is to thug it out. Your options ain't what you think they are. They aren't what you think <laughs> they are. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you know how sick a person's mind is? A, a person's mind is so sick that they could be in the desert and if they get thirsty enough, they can envision water. <laughs> Delusion. Delusion. <laughs> and when you get to it, it's never water over there. What it's is just, it called? Um, a mirage. A mirage, exactly. Yeah. So your, your options are a mirage. And realistically, you don't have time. You know, people think they have time. You never have time. You never know how far you're gonna go and anything in life, and you never know how long you have with anybody in life, right? So, and you never know how long you have opportunity, your opportunities last for. Mm -hmm. So I could be a guy and be like, yo, I'm rich right now at 25 years old. I can get any girl that I want. And 35 year old, I, I turn 35 and I make a poor decision and mm -hmm. I lose all my money. Mm -hmm. So now I ran through all these girls for the last 10 years, right? 
and broke hearts, whatever, whatever, treated everybody terribly, maybe so, maybe not, but I ran out of money. Now I'm a 35-year-old man starting from zero, mm -hmm. starting from scratch. And now, the, and now you know what always happens to a man that gets broken? He tries to go back to the one that he should have never let go. And she's already long gone. What is it, do you think about like society in general or wherever our mindsets are? Like, why do you think that men are delusional about what their available options are? Men are delusional? Well, cause you're talking about in a relationship, you know, like you don't know, you said something about options. Like yeah. we're, we don't know what our, our true options are. I mean, I don't think, see it's so hard because if I had to speak from a guy's standpoint and a guy's point of view, it's different. Um, that statement is generalized, right? Mm -hmm. But for most men, I gotta peel back the layers. Mm -hmm. Men start off with their value at zero when they're born. Mm -hmm. Women start off with their value at 100 when they're born. Really? Yeah, gotta think about it. Let's Now let's speed this up and say that they're 18, both mm -hmm. of them. A man at 18 is still valued at zero. He has nothing he can do to offer to get any woman and start any family. Oh, I see what you're saying. A okay. woman is still 100%, even at 18, and maybe even younger, but we're not going to go that far. Um, yeah. <laughs> at 18, she's still heavily sought, depending on her aesthetics, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it doesn't even matter, depending on where country you're in. So at 18, she's still heavily sought. And she hasn't done anything. She hasn't achieved anything. All she did was exist for 18 years. I see what you're saying. A man existed for 18 years and he's valued at zero. Maybe he goes to school college-wise and he graduates at 20, 22, 23, and now he's up 10%, right? Now this woman that's at 22, she's at 100, but if she sleeps around a lot and she's out there a lot, she goes down to 90. So he's at 10% and she's at 90. Now, if you go higher, now let's go straight to 30, right? They're both 30. She had three failed relationships. She did all these extravagant things. He never really had money, but now he finally got a six-figure paying job. Let's right. talk about average people. Okay, he got $75,000 now. He's making a year. It's a little bit higher than average. That's actually right. like double. Okay, he's making $60,000 a year. That's cool. 65. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, again, I, I'm just trying to break this down for like average people. Average. Okay, so what I'm saying is also we got to figure out what age is that average stat. Is that stat that we talk about when, it call, when we're talking about a salary? Is that accompanying? I would say like eight, a 40 year old person. 18 to 40? Or we come like because right? Let's let's say it's thirty five to forty. Let's say thirty. Uh, it's, it's, Do you tell me most thirty five to forty year old men only no, make forty five thousand dollars a year? No, 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 Rico. We telling you thirty five to sixty five only makes forty four thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So average age. That's, okay. Yeah. But so based on what we know, right? Being here at eight at the table, we know that most men become financially stable by thirty three. So maybe he might only be making forty five, fifty thousand dollars a year, but maybe his credit is good. So he has a nice, good, comfortable line of credit that he can consistently pay off and provide maybe an apartment, a house, whatever the case may be. And forty five thousand in New Jersey is nothing, but forty five thousand in Atlanta, Georgia is a lot. It ain't. <laughs> well, it ain't. <laughs> did you get what I'm saying? Like some, I'm saying somewhere is you know, in Alabama. <laughs> word, but. Um, as he goes up the ranks and he starts to make money, and as long as he's making money and taking care of himself, his value starts to rise, mm -hmm. right? If a girl is 30 years old and she's not, obviously, you know, maybe she might be making money, maybe she might not, but she's living her life. By living her life, I mean exploring all her options, her value will only decrease because she already started with 100. She can't go up to 100. So now we go speed up to 45 years old, right? Now we realize the option part that we're talking about. See, I said this on Eight at the Table, most average millionaires become a millionaire at the age of 56, I think it was. Yes, in the 50s. Right? So at 50 years old, as a millionaire man, you can still double back and get those options. Mm -hmm. Your options will be more than it will be for a woman. Mm -hmm. Right? And so now when we talk about the mirage or the facade of options that 
We think that we have. We think that we have time. Because women think that they have time because they can do whatever they want to do. Men think that they have time because they're like, eventually I'll get to it. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Either way, both ends of the spectrum are detrimental to you because even if you were to be a lucky 50-year-old man with money, how many of those women that you think that you're actually with are really with you for you? Right. You're going to end up alone or you're going to end up paying for your love for the rest of your life. Miserable, if you ask me my opinion. As a woman, you don't want to end up alone and be by yourself, and you don't also, you know, want to run through your options and exercise all your options thinking that you would eventually get picked up by somebody that would treat you right. So, would, and then like, I understand what the point that Alan I'm was trying, making. I don't know if I actually really said what I'm trying to say. What you're saying is that when you start at 100%, ain't nowhere to go but down. Society has... Society has mastered, well, first of all, we live in a world of illusion. Mm -hmm. And disillusion. Yeah, and disillusion, <laughs> right? And, and <laughs> disbelief at this point. But um, so because we have so much illusion that's going on and anybody can make the illusion, create their mm, own illusion yeah. of themselves. I can make you think I'm the most nicest person in the world, but when you meet me, I'm a stone cold asshole. You know what it is? Everybody is creating an avatar. Yep. That's exactly what it is. It's an avatar. It's bait. And everybody's fishing for something. Mm -hmm. And it look good. And then you bite the hook and they reel you in. And now next thing you know, you're on a you're on an unwanted boat in a fish market. With a hook <laughs> in your jaw. <laughs> like. And, and the thing is, like, you know, I like I said this before, I I really believe that if we just take some of the stats, right? So many people grow up misfortunate or unfortunate right and when they grow up unfortunate then you go on instagram and you see somebody living their life you see somebody buying all these things you see somebody posing next to cars i say posing because we don't know if they're rented or not theirs at all in a parking lot in a parking lot <laughs> and then yo like i done seen some crazy like there was a one dude that that's from new jersey and my boy sent him to me he's like yo look at him bro what is he doing i'm like yo this this man is 31 years old He's dressed head to toe, probably like a $5,000 outfit. But he's sitting on like, it looked like a 98 Honda Civic. And we're like, why, where's your priorities at? You are so, so like, cause typically you're not gonna show your car, but mm -hmm. you can show your fit. So people think that you got money. Mm -hmm. So then you go ahead, you go on Instagram. Listen, I'm a, listen, I'm an Instagrammer. I mean, I done shopped on Instagram for women and I done got it, you know, Many times. You got dudes that, you got dudes and women, both, right, that are, you know, portraying themselves to be something more than what they are on social media. And then these people are so desperate to find somebody like their idols, mm -hmm. right, or the people that they deem to be of high status, that they'll bite the bait and know that they're making... A, a woman will know she's making a wrong decision and still do it to convince herself that it is the right one. What you mean? Dating um, dating the wrong man. You said she'll make the wrong decision, but stay to convince herself? No, in the process, she's like, let's say she's seeking out this man or she's allowing this man to seek her, seek her out. She knows that- She it's doesn't want to be wrong. She gotcha. knows, she, yeah, she knows it's the wrong guy, but she's convincing herself that it's right. Yeah, okay. Right? And then next thing you know, she ends up putting herself in a position that, you know, could cause all types of stuff. Detrimental. Heartbreak. Yeah, heartbreak, insecurities. Um, a lot of men will use women to put everything in their name. And then now, you know, her credit and her finances are dropped. But she knew this before getting... See, if you ask Esso, and he's not here to defend himself, they, they don't care or they were... They don't know better, right? Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, I think that they're just naive. Because they know the truth. They don't want to believe the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just like a man. A man will risk it all for a woman, which doesn't make sense to me, right? A man will risk it all for a woman and know it's the wrong woman, but don't care. But why is he doing it? When a man is actually in love, there is no talking him out of wait, his own Wait, wait, wait. Wait, but why isn't it the same thing? I got a question for both of you Why isn't he just... Because men don't love as much. 
I got a question for both of you guys. Okay. Rico mm -hmm. and Aaron. I need juice. Word. I'll get you some. Okay. So why is it when a man sees a woman in a bad relationship or a woman sees a man in a bad relationship, they both come to them and say, I could treat you better, but the person don't go to them? I don't even know that. I, mean, I think maybe maybe they don't go to them because they're trying to, like you said, maybe they're trying to stick it out, hoping for the best, thinking that, you know, this person just can't be as shitty as they're acting. Mm. They just can't be as shitty as they're appearing. Like, there has to be something good here. And a lot of times we invest so much time that we don't want to walk away from that bad investment. I'll give you a perfect example. A person, their residence, so the house that they live in, you just keep pouring money into it, keep pouring money into it. You know, you might be late on the bills. You know, you've lived in this house for 10 years, but you struggled the whole time with it. Yeah. That experience hasn't been good, but like, man, I know I can make it happen. I know I can do it, but it's just a bad investment. And it's hard for people to bite that bullet. And say it was a bad investment. And just cut your losses and just walk away. That's a very hard, because it's like, you know what? I failed. I made a bad decision. Yeah, I think that's the main thing when when we talk about... Well, first and foremost, I don't think any... <laughs> Let me actually time that out. I didn't heard and seen and know dudes that said, yo... And I think that's the most corniest thing you do as a guy, by the way, is to go to a girl who's getting mistreated, right, in her relationship, or she's just not happy in her relationship, and be like, I could treat you better. Listen, I was never that person where you... Where you I'll tell you, oh, we've been together for six years. I was never I'm ready that to cut. person. I don't care how many years. My losses. But, if you, but, if you, but if you in your heart of hearts feel that somebody else can do that for you, do not waste your time and do not waste my time. Yo, I did right? that with my first girlfriend. Right? I had this. Ashley? Her name was Amber. No, oh, that Amber. wasn't. That, no. that was. You're <laughs> triggering. She's triggering. <laughs> So look, my first girlfriend. Oh, okay. the, the, my first real girlfriend, right? There was this one dude. First of all, she was the girl that nobody could really get in high school. Okay. Yeah, what, we what? talked about it. No, 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 no. That was after that. I got oh, that okay. one after that. You know, okay. I'm gonna double down. So, Bill, yeah, I gotta <laughs> get my confidence back. So, um, when I dated her, right? Whatever. We graduate high school and. There was a person who was a year older who graduated high school who I was cool with. And he, every time he saw me outside of high school, because I was still in high school, my senior year, he was graduating. He's like, yo, what's up? You're Dan? What's her name? I'm like, yeah. All the time he would ask me. Then even when I was in college, he would ask me. Every time I seen him, he would ask me. When we broke up, when I tell you this man, she was, when, when we really broke up. He was up, waiting. Bro, when we really broke up, I was like, yo, you know, it's been like two months. I haven't talked to you. Like, you know, coming home for the summer. I tried to double back. And I was like, you talking to anybody? She goes, actually, yeah. I'm like, who's? Then she said this man's name. I said, wow. Plotting the whole time. He's been waiting for his opportunity. And I'm not mad because she's bad. But here's the th funny thing. He thought he could treat her better. He was one of those. See, and it ended too. 80, 20, 25, 75 is like, Nothing is going to hit on all cylinders all the yeah. time. So you have to understand in your mind and prioritize what is important to me at this point in my life. What can I deal what, what bullshit can I tolerate while enjoying the best of everything else in my life? You know, yeah. like, like, for instance, there's some shit my husband do that gets on my fucking nerves. But I'm like, am I willing to leave 80% that's good and great and, and brings me joy and happiness for the 20% that really grinds my fucking gears? No. That's how I feel the about cheating. The numbers don't make sense. What you mean? Like, if that's, I don't understand cheating from a woman's perspective, especially when a man has the ability to have all the options, right? If he's doing 80% of the good, at 20%, where does, you know, a situation where he was cheating fall? Does it flip all the way from 80 to 20? Is that is that action that he exercised way that much to supersede the original 80% good that he was doing? I think that that all depends on what 
you have established in your relationship is a deal breaker. Because if that's not a deal breaker, you be like, okay, got you. I'm I'm I'm, I'm at the get my lick, but okay, we're gonna still be together. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna get my lick. But that's and good. I'm not and I'm not gonna leave. Because it's 80-20. Like, that's not a deal breaker for me. But I uh, and at the same token, like men are willing to give away the eighty percent when that when a woman steps out on fifteen percent or the twenty percent. You know, and I just like you just broke it down. I different. don't particularly understand why a man would be able to give away 80% of an incredible marriage just because his wife slept with somebody else. Okay, so let me... The only way it's fair is if I already did it. But why? Because for a man and... All right, so it is different, right? We... And you know me, I'm the one that says equality, equality, equality. But at the end of the day, we'll never be 50-50. Mm -hmm. And because it would never be 50-50, there are certain things a woman will always have in her favor, and there's going to be certain things that a man's mm -hmm. going to always have in her favor. And unfortunately for women, the sexual partnership or sexual partner experience for men is always going to be in their favor. Right? <clears throat> so when we, go, when we go about it, men are more prideful right be of their of their relationships and their marriage because i'm gonna say depending on what type of men we're talking about mm -hmm. if i'm paying listen i'm gonna say this to everybody so they, i want all women to understand this you want a man that's a provider if i am providing for you if I'm taking care of these bills, I don't care if it's 80, 20, or 70, 30. If I'm, if I'm taking care of majority of these bills in this house, I'm finding a way to give you some sex that you want and sex that I want too, right? I gotta put that out there. If we have a child, I'm taking care of my responsibilities as a father, and I'm making sure that emotionally I'm there for you to some capacity and the man is not perfect, right? But I'm doing all of these things. If you decide to step outside of me when I'm giving you all of these things and providing is the main thing, because I just listed four ways I'm providing for you, that means you're not satisfied and you would never be satisfied with what I have to offer for you to go out there and sleep with somebody else. So that's why it's more of a deal breaker for a man than it is a woman. Now, if, and if you want to play devil's advocate, if a woman is playing all these bills and a woman is doing all those things, she has the right to go sleep with somebody else too and he has to be quiet. Okay. But when I'm taking care of you, like you are my own, you do not have that right to explore those options. So let me ask you a question. So you made a big point about it being financial taken care of, right? So what if... You're providing financially, but the woman is doing everything else, spiritually, emotionally. She respects you as a leader. She respects you as a man. She lets How? you leave. What do you mean? How you respecting me as a leader and you're sleeping with somebody else? I don't, I don't, those are two separate issues. I don't think women are having sex frivolously as much as men. And usually when women have I'm a woman. I know what's going on in these streets. <laughs> Let, let, let your homeboys tell you what they think <laughs> about women's sex lives. I'm going to tell you what so I then, know about the sex lives of women. When a woman cheats on her husband that's treating her good, right? Let's be realistic. Mm -hmm. A woman is cheating on her husband that's treating her good and handling majority of the things that he's able to. Like I said, he's not perfect, so he's not doing everything. And she sleeps with another man. Most of those times, right, I'm speaking about majority, not all. Most of those times, you're telling me that there is no emotions attached to that woman stepping out of that marriage. I don't know what most, but I'm going to tell you there's definitely times when it's just sex. All right. I mean, you're a woman. I can't argue with you. All I'm going to say is we think differently, you know. And, and I get that, but I'm, I'm just I don't I'm just want using... that type of woman that could just have just sex. Oh, you mean like with uh, 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 someone yeah. else? I don't want a woman that could just have sex with just frivolous sex. I would want her to... Okay, but what if she don't have sex? What if she... Okay, 
Here we go. She emotional she's, cheating? She, she talking to this dude on the computer. She talking to him at work. She on the phone. She text messaging him. Seeing him at the grocery store, X, Y, and Z. She ain't, she ain't having sex with him. But that is her relationship with him. Can I ask Are you how long has this been transpiring? I don't know. The same amount of time it transpired, like, I don't know, in, I don't know. Two, let's whip him back. A month. Does it matter? A month. A month. So a month isn't very long. She's getting ready to fuck him then. Okay, let's say a year, and they still haven't had sex. If it's a year, I feel more comfortable. If it's a month, I don't trust it because, the, I mean, this is just from my understanding of women. Granted, I'm not a woman, right? My understanding of women, 30 days is like, okay, she could be getting herself ready to potentially explore those options. If she had a whole year gotcha. mm -hmm. and she didn't explore those options, I would self-reflect. If I found that out, I'd be like, damn, you know what? I'm sorry. What am I doing wrong that's making you seek this emotional attachment from somebody? Because that's all it is, is an emotional attachment, which can be fixed for most cases. I don't deem that as cheating. Maybe he's not enough. Who, me or him? The, the, the husband. The, the main guy. I mean, at, at the end of the day, most men will never fit a woman's perspective as a as what she deems to be this perfect guy while she's younger in her youth.